Hey there, welcome back to another week of Coding at Home with the Code Hub. Hey there, I'm Matt with the Code Hub, and we're back again for another week. Um, today, we're going to be talking about augmented reality again. We're going to be working through some Reality Composer stuff. We played around with it a little bit on, well, we played around with it a lot bit for the last few weeks. Uh, last week, though, we kicked into the image anchor um, capability of Reality Composer, where we can add an image to Reality Composer and choose that as our, our anchor, where we're going to drop our scene and build our scene around that. Now, on Friday, it was a huge, very packed session where we went through building up a almost like a, a virtual book experience where you could find the cover of a book. We used the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And we showed the different books that are in this particular book. This has got multiple books in it. Maybe you were doing it with chapters. Maybe you were trying to follow along and just trying to keep up. Because um, there was a lot in that. So what we'll do is we'll go through that again today. We'll try to simplify a few things. And we'll see if we can get you um, to refine your experience with a book cover as an image anchor. All right, so we're going to pop over to the iPad and open up Reality Composer for that. All right, so here we go. We've got our, we've got Reality Composer open. In fact, this was the scene that we were working on on, uh, on Friday. Um, you can see I've got a few different scenes. I've got my, my book one, book two, book three scenes. I've got scene one. I've got this other scene at the very start. Let's start from the very beginning, though. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna grab a different book that I have here um, that just happened to be on the nightstand. We'll take a picture of that and go through the whole series to create a brand new uh, Reality Composer document where um, we'll add a bit of information to our uh, to our book cover in real life. So here, let's. We're gonna exit out of Reality Composer. I'm gonna take a picture of my my book cover over here. So this one should be pretty good because it's pretty distinct. I'm actually going to turn off live photo. I have live photo turned on. I'm going to actually turn that off. And we'll take as straight a photo as we can. There we go. Cool. We've got our photo. I'm going to open up, open that up. Now let's do this. We're going to edit this photo. So now that I have it in edit mode, I'm going to go over here to this crop bar, tap on that. So now that I've got handles, so I can grab these and drag them in on my image. I'm going to actually take away some of the blue. Maybe not. Maybe we'll try to include that as well. Okay, cool. So that's that's my book cover. I actually need to rotate that because it's not looking right. There is a rotate button up here. So we just tap that. There we go. All right, we're going to hit done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this to files so I can import it into Reality Composer. So I'm going to go up here to the share button. And the goal, by the way, before we go off to share the file, it was just to crop this out so that we had a very distinct image here for our uh, book cover. It's it, It'll be able to be detected more easily if it's fairly distinct, like this bright yellow color with the blue border um, shouldn't appear too many places around the room, unless I'm the author and I have the copy of this book around my room a bunch. But let's let's share this, let's save this to files. We're going to go down here and save to files. If you don't see that in your list of shareable actions for photos, you can always hit edit actions and it should show up in there. So I'm going to hit save to files and we're going to name this something useful. This IMG 0073 is not super helpful. So let's call this one just call it Gin Patrol Cover. Done. And we're going to save this. We'll just save this on our desktop. 
It's important to remember where you save these documents, even though they should show up in the recently, in the recent items in the files app. Okay, cool. So we've we've taken a picture of our cover. We've saved it to files. Now we're going to go over to Reality Composer and do the real work. So we're going to open up Reality Composer. I have my scene for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm going to go back out by hitting this back button here. And I'm going to create a new scene. You can keep working on your existing scene because it you'll still be able to apply some of the things that we're doing here to your existing scene if you have one from Friday. So we're going to hit the plus button up here to create a new project. We're going to pick when we, we are given the option to choose an anchor, we're going to pick an image anchor. And now we've already done the, the legwork. We've got, gotten a, a photo for our, our image anchor. So we're going to pick choose over here. If for whatever reason this isn't showing up, it's just by tapping on this properties button here in the toolbar, that'll show up. If it doesn't look like that, because maybe you have your this object selected, we just want to tap anywhere on the grid and it'll change to the scene inspector. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go here and choose my image. I need to import it. So I'm going to hit the plus button. And there it goes. It's in my recents gym patrol cover. So I'm going to select that. And once I select it, I've just added it to my content library. I haven't actually chosen it as my image anchor yet. So now I'm going to go tap on this here. Okay, now a very important thing to note when you're adding your image anchor, you want to help out the code that the Apple engineers wrote to figure out where this is laid out. Now, you can see down here, it says physical width and then physical height. So this is to help the core ML stuff that figures out how big an image is in real life determine okay this is a match for the image that that we want to anchor stuff to now my book is not 57 centimeters i don't even know the metric system all that well and i can guess that my book is not that big um let's have a quick now i have i happen to have here if i turn on ar i'll show you happen to have here just a little ruler if we have a quick look we can see that well that's about 10 centimeters, maybe 14 centimeters wide. All right, so let's go, let's go hit the X button to get out of augmented reality because we've done our measurement. And the reason why I know that the top is the width that we're, we're talking about is because I know that this image that I have, the width is shorter than the height. So you can see, I don't need to, and the really nice thing about this is that Reality Composer knows how big the image is and how, what the proportion is, width to height. So it actually does the math for me. It says, well, if you're telling me that the width here is 14.28 centimeters, I know that the height has got to be 21.63 centimeters. So it's resized it for me automatically. Now, like other types of anchors, we can also set the scene physics. We can have objects collide with this plane. We can make it different materials. We can change the gravity here. But that's it. So I, now I've got my image anchor. I've got this little hexagonal 3D shape. Let's hit AR. Okay, cool. Oh, just, it detected it right away. If we hit the play button, now it's locked in place on my book. And in fact, even when I lift and, and lower the cover, it moves. So we didn't even get into vertical anchors where we can anchor stuff to the, the walls. We've only anchored stuff to the table so far. But now we can do, we, we're doing both vertical and horizontal because it'll stick to the surface of the book no matter what position it's in.
So that's it. From from the very start of this lesson to now, we've been able to get this um, image composited onto the book cover in, in no time at all. But this isn't very interesting for a book cover. It, it, that doesn't make any sense to go around dropping hexagons on people's books. So let's turn off AR by hitting this button up here. And let's work on this a little bit. So what we were trying to work towards on Friday was building up a bit of a flow for our scene. And we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. So let's, let's take a step back and try to design this a little bit. All right, so one thing that happens here, if we go over here, this is our scene list. If we tap on this button, we'll see that we've got one scene. Right now it's just called scene. Let's call this our start scene. So I'm gonna tap in here over in the properties inspector. I'm gonna to go to the beginning and I'm gonna call this start scene. Cause this will be the one that, that runs the very first time we, we open up our reality file and the problem with this thing here is that when I'm waving the iPad around trying to find my book cover, this thing sort of floats in midair. So my, for my starting scene, I don't, I don't like that behavior. I want to just, once I just detect the, the book cover, that's when I want my scene to show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on this hexagon shape. Tap on it once, tap on it twice, and I'm going to delete this. So now if I run my AR scene, see it now, I can see because I'm in editing mode that it's detected the, 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 um, the book cover because it's given me a big target here and a big circle on the, the anchor. But there's no, there are no other objects. So if I hit the play button, it's going to be very uninteresting because now it's just detected the cover, but I've got nothing on it. So what I want to have happen now is we'll turn off AR. Is I want to transition to another scene where I actually build up my whole augmented reality experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the scene inspector here. And we're going to hit the plus button and add a new scene. This is also going to be an image anchor scene. And in fact, we want to use the same image. So instead of creating a new one, there's another thing I could do. I could actually hit cancel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap and hold on this start scene over here. So if I tap and hold, now I've got two options. I can copy this or I can duplicate it. If I duplicate it, it's going to take the image anchor that I've already defined, including the size, and it's just going to create a new scene with those same properties. So I'm going to hit the duplicate option. It's even give, change the name to start scene one. You can see it's got the same cover. It's got the same physical width and height, same physics. So now uh, let's rename this because this will be our our very first scene. So maybe we'll uh, have a we'll call this scene uh, about this book. So about this book, and we can call it a scene. We can leave that scene off. You can name it whatever you like. Okay, so that's cool. We have um, we have our second scene now. Let's add some elements to it. Let's let's do something interesting with this. So let's see about this book. Maybe we could add a few of the main characters here. So let's go up here. And we're going to add some elements. We're going to hit the plus button up in the toolbar, and we're just going to add some text. So we'll go here, pick the text. I can tap on this and drag it around because I'm in edit mode. I can change a bunch of my properties here. So let's scroll down. Let's make our font a little bit smaller. We can change the thickness. 
We can change the material, add a background. I'm going to add a background just so that I can see the text very clearly. We want to make sure that our augmented reality experience is accessible so that if you have some vision difficulties, you still want to be able to see it. So we'll leave the background. Well, let's make the background color maybe a, a gray. Ah, let's make it a black so it's very clear what it is. And now we're going to change the text to put the name of the first, the, the main character. Now, if you don't know the main character of your book, maybe you're going to pop up the author's name or something else you can get off the back of the book. Maybe you're going to write uh, the blurb like we have on the, on the back of our book here. You might, you might show this in our, in our augmented reality view. All right, so I've got Jay as our first character. Cool, so let's, I'm gonna actually try to do the same trick that we did before. I'm gonna try to position it here. Now remember, we had to rotate it a little bit. If I tap with two fingers, I can drag over to get this on the screen for me. So I'm gonna rotate this a bit. Let's try around the Z axis, see what we get. That is not what we want. Let's try it around the X axis. There we go. Now it's kind of looking straight up at us. We see, I'm gonna tap with one finger and rotate it. Now it's a bit too high. It's kind of popping way out of the book. Let's have it at the same level as the book. It looks like it, it, looks like it extends from the side. So, okay, so there's our first, there's our first character. So let's play this. Let's see what it looks like. We'll turn on AR. See, there's my object floating up. Now I don't detect it because I don't have, I don't have the back cover to find anywhere. So if I flip it over, there we go. We've got our, our J label sticking out the side. If I hit play, that looks, that looks pretty good. It's maybe a little big, but that's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transition. So when we tap on J, maybe we'll have a bit more information about, about J in this book, or maybe if you're, you're picking the author, maybe you'll have the author bio, uh, in another scene and that'll appear. The way we can do that, is using behaviors. So turn off AR. Now, one way to transition from scenes is we can transition when the scene starts. And in fact, that's what we want to do to make this look really smooth. So let's hit this, the scene navigator and go back to our start scene. So this, right now, if we play this scene, nothing shows up on the book. It detects the book, but it, nothing, nothing shows up. So if we go and add a behavior by tapping on this arrow button in the toolbar, we have no def behaviors defined right now. I'm going to hit the plus button. And we have a few options here. Now, I could do this a different way. I could just hide all the elements by do using this start hidden behavior. But what we're going to do is create our own custom behavior. And we are going to call this behavior start scene. Because the intention here is we're going to tap on, let's add a trigger. And our trigger is going to be scene start. So the scene's going to start when we detect that, that image anchor. And now the action that we want to perform when we detect that start scene is we want to move to the next scene where we've actually started adding our objects. So the way we do that is with this change scene option. So all we did was we tapped on either here or on the plus button to add an action. Scroll down and there's our change scene. So we're going to tap on that. 
And now we have an option to select our scene. So let's hit choose. And we can pick either the start scene or about this book. Now, let's try a little something. I have a feeling this is gonna cause a bit of a problem for us, but if we pick start scene by accident or on purpose, and we hit play, Well, nothing super bad is happening. That works. Let's try it with augmented reality turned on. And we'll hit play. All right, well, nothing too bad is happening. But one thing I thought might happen is we might have an infinite loop here because we're having the scene start and then we're changing to another scene, which is itself. Thankfully, nothing too, too bad happens. We're able to get out of it. But now we want to actually pick the about this book scene. So let's try playing this out now. So we're in that first scene still. And if we go here, if we hit the, oh, actually, if we hit the, hide the behaviors. And we turn off AR. Now we can go select our scene. Inspector, and we're still on the start scene. So what we're going to do is start AR, and then we're going to hit the play button to see how well that behavior works. So here goes AR. Okay, and then we'll hit the play button. Okay, that was a bit more seamless. Let's try that again. If we hit play, and we're looking around a bit. Much more seamless the way the element shows up on the in reality all right so now we have Jay after we find this book we might want to be able to find out more about that particular character or if you've picked the author's name maybe we want to find out more about the author so we want to be able to tap on that text over here we want to be able to tap on this text and then go to another page that has other elements on it that explain to us a little bit about the main character so let's stop this and we'll turn off AR for a sec. And we're going to go up to the scene inspector again. And we're going to add another scene. So again, like before, we could press the plus button. But what we're going to do is duplicate that, that final, that last scene that we've made. So we're going to go tap on this one twice. So I'm going to tap on it once. And then tap again. And then I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to tap and hold. And then the menu shows up. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. And again, you can see it copied some of the properties again for me. It, it copied the title and just appended a one to the name of the scene. Well, let's pick this one and let's rename it. So we're going to hit the properties button up here. And we're going to say uh, about this, about Jay, because this will be about our main character. Now you might call it about the author or more about the book. If you're going to give more, maybe a summary, maybe you've decided, actually, this is how I'm going to do my book report on the call of the wild. And you'll, You'll include more about the, the actual book when you tap on the button. And maybe the button, instead of saying the character's name or the author's name, says summary or book report. This is all just about building up a little bit of an experience around our particular image anchor we're using. All right, so I'm going to call mine about J scene because it's going to be about the main character of this, this particular book. And instead of having the, the name J anymore, well, maybe we'll leave that there actually, and we'll reset the rotation and have it pop up here. What I'll do is I'm actually going to leave a placeholder. I'll put a, hit the plus button here and I'm going to leave a placeholder 
let's use one of the basic objects for a person. So what I might do is have a, a little portrait of Jay. So let's make that, and we're gonna put it in like a round frame. So let's tap on the cylinder. We're gonna tap on the cylinder to edit its properties. Let's see, we're gonna have it rotate. Again, just like we had the other thing rotate, we'll have it rotate. See what 90 looks like, that's not quite it. Let's have it rotate 180 on the x-axis. That doesn't work. Let's use 90. Now we can go and change our cylinder properties here. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Not sorry, not that way, not height. Height I'll make smaller. I'll make the diameter larger so we can have a larger portrait of Jay. Maybe not that big. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll save this off. And if I was going to use it in my app, uh, if you use Reality Composer on the Mac, you can actually drag images into it. Uh, I don't think you can do that in, on the iPad. I haven't been able to find a way to paste images in as, as objects that can appear also on the screen. Obviously, we can see how they become image anchors, um, and I'm sure there's a way. Maybe they'll we'll find out a new way um, if there's a new version of Reality Composer coming up next week with WWDC. So here, this will be my portrait of Jay, and then I'm going to add just a little bit more text on the side. So I'm going to go hit the plus button here. I'm going to go down and find the text. Tap on that, and I am gonna drag this. I'll drag J a little closer, and I'll drag my text over here. Like before, I'm gonna do minus 90 rotation on the x-axis to, to lay it down. I'm gonna change the font size. I'm gonna add a background. We'll add the same black background. And we'll just write a bit of text about, about Jay. So Jay is, a, in this book, he's a nine-year-old wannabe detective. Because he's looking for his lost friend who has stopped coming to school and seems to have run away from home. So we'll move this over. Now that I've added a bit of text, I can see that's maybe a bit too big because I cover the book. Okay, so imagine this, this, is, this isn't a bad scene. We have Jay, the name of the character there. We have a bit of description about it. We have, we'll maybe have a portrait up there. And then what we'll do is maybe just add a little arrow to go back to the other scene. So let's go up here and add one last item. So now we have our the name of our character. We have a bit of description about him. We have a potential landing spot for a portrait of him. And then I'm gonna hit the plus button and add this arrow here, because this one looks like it's going back. You know, tap on the arrow and move it out of the way. I'll make it a little bit smaller. Actually, there's some other, we can make it a 3D arrow. Change some the head shape and the tail shape. Change the diameter. Let's just play around with it a little bit. All right. So we're gonna use this object to get back to the original scene. So imagine we had more writing about uh, the author or about other characters in the book. This is how we would navigate to this scene and then navigate back out. So we've just added a lot on this page. You don't have to add a, a portrait holder. You don't have to add a description. You can just add whatever elements you think work for your book. 
But the key, the important one here, I think, is going to be this back arrow to be able to go back to our about this book scene. So the way we'll do that is again with a behavior. So just like we had our behavior at the start. So when, when the scene is detected, we navigate to the about this book scene. We're going to go to the behaviors tab. And we're going to add another behavior for this scene. You can see that there are no behaviors defined on this scene. Because the behaviors are specific to the scene that you define them in. So now I'm going to add a behavior by hitting the plus button. We're going to make a custom one. And we're going to call this behavior uh, go back. And the trigger for this behavior is going to be when we tap on something. So when we tap on this arrow. So now it gives us the option to select an affected object. We'll tap on the arrow. And the action is going to be that choose scene action. So we'll tap on that plus button next to action sequence. And now when we'll scroll up and we'll find our change scene item. And now we have to pick the scene we want to navigate to. So we're on the about J scene. Because you can see it gives a little preview and we can see all of our elements that we've added here. We're going to tap on the about this book scene. And let's try playing this out. Let's just hit the play button. We won't even turn on AR. So there's our scene. Imagine when we find our book cover, this is what shows up. There's a little portrait of the guy. If we tap on this arrow, we've gone back to the J scene. Let's see how this works all the way through and see if we have it hooked up right. So let's, we're going to go over here to the scene inspector and pick our start scene. And we'll see if we've hooked up the entire thing properly. So we're going to hit AR. And point it at our keyboard. You can see drop frames is zero, which is great. And now let's wave it around. Okay, cool. There we've detected our book. All right, cool. So let's hit the play button. Well, if we wave it around, we find the book. All right, cool. There's our J name popping out of the book. If I tap on that, oh, nothing's happening. Okay. It's still, it's attached to the, our image anchor, which is good. And I can even move it when I shake the cover. Um, but I'm just remembering I didn't hook up a tap behavior for our um, RJ name tag. So let's stop this. Turn off AR for a second. And now we're gonna go check out the scene inspector. So we're still on the first one. I'm gonna tap on about this book scene. And now I have to add a behavior to this scene. So again, we're gonna go up to the toolbar, hit the arrow. You can see, again, I have no behaviors defined, even though I've defined one for the first scene and for the last scene. So we're going to hit the plus button to add a new behavior. And we're going to go pick custom. I'm going to rename this one by tapping on behavior. And I can delete all this. So we'll call this behavior about J because that's the scene we'll navigate to. So we'll say about J. And now I'm going to tap on the trigger to add a trigger. And I want the trigger to be a tap. So let's pick tap. And I can select the affected objects. Well, I only have one object in the scene. So if I tap on J, it highlights and it shows me here that I've got one affected object. And let's add an action to the sequence. So we'll tap on the box and scroll up and pick change scene. 
And again, just like we've been doing, we're going to choose to change the scene, and we're going to go to the About Jay scene. So now I think we might be fully hooked up. So let's let's try this out. We're going to go up to the scene navigator. And we're going to go back to the start scene. And the reason why I'm going back to the start scene is because I want to be able to send this reality file to someone and have them be able to run it in there on their iPad without Reality Composer installed and be able to see the experience that I just built. If they have this same book, they'd be able to see a little bit about Jay anywhere they found the cover of that book. So let's go turn on AR. Let's see, we're gonna hit, yeah, we'll turn on AR. We'll detect the book. We're gonna hit play. So we've transitioned to that second scene. Have my book, it's not moving with me. I can see that. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna tap on the J tag and I've gone to my next, the next step in my book experience. So I've got this kind of floating about this book. So Jay is a nine year old, wannabe detective. There's his name tag again. There's the book cover. There's the portrait waiting to be filled in by me. And then there's the back arrow over by our coffee mug. So if I tap on the back arrow, now it's taking the other elements off the screen. So maybe I don't like the way this is laying out. Maybe I don't like the way Jay is jumping around. I might change that a little bit. But now I've built a, a reality file that someone could experience and go through the different scenes relatively easily on their own. And they could spend a bit of time exploring what I thought about the book or what I thought about the painting, if I took a picture of a painting. Image anchors are hugely powerful in Reality Composer. You can do some amazing stuff with them. I'd love to see what you can do and the way you can share that stuff with, with me or with anybody else is you can go up over here to the three dots on your iPad and pick export and I'm going to export the whole project because I want that I've spent a lot of time building up the start scene transition to the the about this book scene and then the transition from there to the about J scene so I'm going to export the entire project by hitting export it's going to give me a choice of where I want to save it. So I'm going to save it to files. So I don't want to save it as new project 13 because that's going to be very confusing. So let's call it Gin Patrol. And that works for me. So we'll hit done. So we need to choose a new location to save this item. We have the same problem. There we go. There's the iCloud drive. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll save it on our desktop, just like we saved our image there. So I'll go hit save. Excellent. So now let's take another look. We took a look on Friday. Let's take a look today and see what it looks like. So we'll back out of Reality Composer. We'll go to the Files app. And this is the Hitchhiker's Guide demo that we did on Friday. Let's close that out. I'm going to pick my ginpatrol.reality file. You can see it's got a different file extension than my new project. One, the RC project is a Reality Composer project file. This is a reality file that can be opened on any iPad any modern iPad. Let's tap on that. And you can see it's a little different interface. We've got a little switcher here from AR to object and we can share this again. Now I'm going to move my iPad to start.
Okay, there's the scene start. Ooh, maybe we have a little issue. There's J, if we tap that, now we have our our little arrow, back arrow over there. We have our our portrait. We have our text. And we can see that maybe we would not want to position things too far away from the book because it'll lose the image anchor and it'll, the scene will kind of fly away. Now we can tap on the arrow and go back to see just J. This is a great way to share our, our book experience and also a great way to test our book experience out uh, and see how our design works and if we need to tweak it. Because oftentimes we'll take a first pass and then we'll have to tweak it. Almost guaranteed you have to tweak it, whether you're designing an app uh, or a, a reality experience. So that's it. So that's our image anchor session for the second day. A little bit similar to, to Friday's, hopefully a little bit slower and easier to, to work with. I hope you've enjoyed the Reality Co Composer stuff. Um, I was talking about maybe doing some Xcode work during the week. Uh, we might hold off on that just yet. I think in honor of WWDC coming up, we might dive back into our Swift Playgrounds starting tomorrow and we'll play around with flashy photos and a, a few of the other playgrounds uh, that we've been working on and get back to some Swift code. Um, but we'll see. We're going to play it by ear this week and, and try to explore a few different fun things. And then we'll have a lot to talk about the week after because we'll have the WWDC keynote where they usually announce new stuff. Uh, Reality Composer they announced last year. Uh, so hopefully we get some improvements to Reality Composer and um, maybe some new toys to play with. All right, thanks for joining us today and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.